Hello, WRN. Dan Gordon here. I want to thank you first for electing me as president, putting your faith in me, and thank you also for taking a few minutes of your time. I'm going to be outlining some of the issues I've seen in WRN and, more importantly, talk about some solutions. Let's begin. Here are the problems as I've seen them. A general malaise in the room, a lack of enthusiasm. The high, middle, and low earners in WRN remaining in those positions year after year. I want to help all of us earn more. Members who need help the most are taking the least initiative to get it, and vice versa. There's a lot of opportunities in WRN for people who are struggling to get better. And unfortunately, the only people I see taking those initiatives is people who are already doing well. More gossip, more disagreements, more dissatisfaction, and more feelings of mistreatment. A focus on me and mine rather than we and ours. Staying self-centric doesn't support the growth of everyone. And finally, members not working together in support of each other. We're one of the largest LATIP groups in the country. The knowledge and resources in WRN are immense, and yet we're not stepping up to help each other in ways that we can. One of the most important things that's being done the least is us getting together outside of WRN. The truth is, one meeting a week isn't enough. So I have segmented the entire group into eight different groupings. Business to business, health, home contractor, home services, lifestyle, media, professional service, and property. Eight members of WRN have stepped up to be captains of their group. They'll be reaching out to you to set up times to get together, meet, connect, and share business opportunities. So here's my promise to you. I'm going to help make this year your most successful year in WRN. I'm going to offer profound learning experiences to allow greater things to show up in your business life. I'm going to challenge your long-held belief systems that have served as distractions and have held you back. And I'm going to help you reimagine the concepts of success and failure for the purpose of experiencing greater satisfaction in business and in life. One of the big ways I see people holding themselves back is because of the discomfort of doing something new and the fear that shows up because of it. About a year ago, 60 Minutes did an interview with Elon Musk. I edited that interview down to five minutes. It's going to provide you with a whole different context for what it means to truly step up in your business. Tesla is another revolutionary idea from the mind of Elon Musk, a 42-year-old Silicon Valley entrepreneur who built an industrial empire from the stuff of little boy dreams. How do you describe yourself? I usually describe myself as uh, an engineer. That's basically what I've been doing since I was a kid. I'm interested in things that, that change the world or, or that affect the future. How did you figure you were gonna start a car company and be successful at it? Well, I, I didn't really think Tesla would be successful. I thought we would most likely fail. But you say you didn't expect the company to be successful? Then why try? If something's important enough, you should try, even if you, the, the probable outcome is failure. His goal wasn't to show a profit, but to reveal the possibilities. It is a desire to discover that's also behind Musk's other line of vehicles. I had so many people try to talk me out of starting a ride company, it was, it was crazy. What did they tell you? One good friend of mine collected a whole series of, of uh, videos of rockets blowing up and made me watch those. He just didn't want me to lose all my money. Musk's fascination with technology dates to his childhood in South Africa. He earned degrees in business and physics at the University of Pennsylvania and asked his brother to join him in California. When we moved to Silicon Valley, we had nothing. So we actually lived in the office and we would sleep on the floor in the evening and go shower at the YMCA the next morning. And then we would be ready to go before, the, before some of our employees would arrive so they wouldn't think we were actually sleeping in the office. <laughs> In that office, Musk invented a program that gave step-by-step -step directions between addresses. That's common today in cars and phones, but in 1995, it was magic. In four years, he made $22 million. Next, he started an online banking firm that he grew into PayPal, a system for making purchases on the internet. And you sold PayPal to eBay for what? Uh, it was about uh, one and a half billion dollars. His share was 180 million and he bet it all on Tesla and SpaceX. But at the age of 37, he hit rock bottom. His first rockets failed to reach orbit and an early model Tesla Roadster had quality problems. In 
2008, the rocket company is not going well. You've no. had three failures. Great. The car company is hemorrhaging money. Yeah. And the American economy has tanked in the worst recession since the Great Depression. Right. What was that year like for you? And I'm getting divorced, by the way. <laughs> that terrible year was captured in a documentary called Revenge of the Electric Car. His plant was filled with flawed cars that couldn't be delivered. To save Tesla, Musk needed millions more from investors. His fortune was gone. He was essentially broke. Oh yeah, in debt, more than broke. More than broke. Yeah. I remember waking up the Sunday uh, before Christmas uh, on, in 2008 and thinking to myself, man, I never thought I was someone who could ever uh, be capable of a nervous breakdown. Um, and, but I, I felt this was the closest I've ever come because it, it seemed pretty, pretty dark. We were running on fumes at that point. We had virtually no money. So a fourth failure... A fourth failure would have been absolutely game over. Done. Done. But flight four was flawless. In Musk's world, it lit the darkness. <laughs> NASA called and told us that we'd won a one and a half billion dollar contract. And I couldn't even hold the phone. It's like, I just, I just blurted out, I love you guys. <laughs> they saved you. Yeah, they did. Two days later, on Christmas Eve, Tesla's investors decided to pour in more money. So you were saved in the period of three days yeah. by two completely unexpected events. Yeah. The rockets haven't failed since. His cargo capsule has docked three times with the space station. Capture is confirmed. And in the California plant, they're fitting seats for what they hope will be eventual manned missions. Musk has just announced a $5 billion factory to be built in the U.S., which he says will make more lithium-ion batteries than all the other plants on Earth combined. What is it about you that seems to invite skepticism? Well, I think it's because we're doing these things that uh, seem unlikely to succeed. <laughs> and we've been fortunate, and at least thus far, they have succeeded. So I've provided you with a link to fill out an online intake of the WRN Success Questionnaire. If you weren't at the President's meeting, please make sure you fill this out. It's five simple questions, and it's going to help me help you find the success that you're looking for this year. Let me review what the questions are. Number one, what is your definition of next level success for yourself and your business? What's the next big step up for you? Two, why do you think you haven't yet achieved that success? I bet it's not just that you haven't worked hard enough. Three, what is your greatest strength in your business? What do you do better than most people in your line of work do? Four, what is the most challenging aspect of your business for you? For a lot of people, it's sales. Some of us, it's managing employees, staying encouraged, collecting past due accounts. What is it for you? And five, how willing are you to challenge yourself so that your success is no longer limited? Are you not very willing at all? Do you think I might try something new if it's not too hard? I'll only try something new if I think it's worthwhile. Or do you think, I'll try new and challenging things even if I don't see an immediate benefit? Or do you consider yourself fully committed and you'll do whatever it takes? So for my WRN success plan, there are two simple parts. The ways I would like you to contribute to your success and the ways that I will be willing to contribute to your success. Let's start with the ways that I would like you to contribute to your success. I wanna talk about the LATIP business category. So we all know the LATIP creed. LATIP is a professional organization of men and women, yada, yada, yada. And then we get to our favorite part. Conflicts of interest are disallowed. However, I think it's the phrase right before that that's most important. Each business category is represented by only one member. It seems like we've elevated the importance of the business category to mean more than it was ever intended to. Our business categories just indicate that if I own a tire store, that someone else who owns another tire store can't join my group. However, if there's an auto repair person in the group and he happens to mention that he puts tires on cars, he's not representing himself as my category. He made a mistake. It's something I can address with him directly or talk to a member at large. 
And yet, when someone else has mentioned a competing category, there's been a tremendous amount of drama. It's as if we think that if someone else mentions our category, everyone will go running towards them, abandoning us, and we'll never get any work again. That's just not true. I'm gonna ask that we all step away from this concept and take a different approach. Because there's two ways of thinking. There's a mentality of scarcity or there's a mentality of abundance. In that belief, there's more than enough for everybody, so I don't have to live in fear. Now, in the addendum to the WRN rules, it now states that if you bring a guest, you're responsible to make sure that that guest doesn't mention a competing category if they are. Now, if you don't take that responsibility, you get fined $25. It's your incentive to remember next time to be more attentive. Suggestions and ideas. Since taking over as president, it seems like everybody has their own idea for changes to WRN. So here's how I'm going to direct your ideas. If you do have a suggestion for a way that WRN can be more productive, efficient, and profitable, then I want to hear it. Now, just as long as each suggestion is accompanied by a solution and you have a plan to implement that solution. After all, how can we take a suggestion or an idea seriously if even you don't believe in it enough to make sure that the changes that you want to happen actually happen? The WRN 30 second commercials. So here's something that I've heard a lot. Why do some people get to talk as long as they want and the rest of us have to suffer through that stupid bell? It's not fair. Well, I agree with that. So just to give you some context, board members collectively spend 30 to 40 hours a week on WRN matters outside of the group. Now, so if we build that time at just $100 an hour, which is pretty conservative, that means that as a board, we're spending up to $4,000 a week on you. Now, during the 30 second commercials, collectively, the board uses an extra three minutes and 30 seconds a week, which means that you're spending $5.85 on us. So you're ahead, $3,994.15. It's not fair, but we do it anyway. It's a simple token of appreciation, and I think we owe it to the board. But now in taking over as president, I was asked to lead by example, and I've chosen to do that. My commercials are now 30 seconds. If I go over, I put $5 in the bucket, and I hope that everybody follows that example. Now, I've heard that some people still don't believe this is fair. So what is fair? Fair means that everyone in WRN is treated equally. So are we fair? Yes. Because for everyone, the effort of what you put in is the gain of what you get back out again. If you want to get more, you give more. That's fair. Your success in WRN is only limited by your ability to think globally rather than locally. The top earners in this group have consistently put in more time, more effort, and given more of themselves for the benefit of others. It's no coincidence that they're top earners. So if you're putting your focus on the idea that WRN is not giving me enough tips, or other members are causing me problems, or Dan is sending out a bunch of mediocre text messages, the truth is you are distracting yourself. You're distracting yourself from taking bold and direct action in your life. You're distracting yourself from seeking new avenues for success and you're distracting yourself from reaping the rewards that this group has to offer. Blaming, gossiping, feeling victimized. These are all distractions from stepping up, asking for help, and truly investing in your life and in your business. If you think back to the Elon Musk interview, at no point was he blaming someone else for all the troubles that he had. He took the responsibility and therefore was empowered to find the solutions. Let me help you do that too. So I want to tell you the truth about WRN. WRN is a unique place where we have unlimited opportunities to step boldly into new directions in our lives and in our businesses. It's a place where we are a supported team of successful, considerate, and enthusiastic people who want to help. And the big truth is that our WRN membership fee gets us in the door. That's it. After we're in, our success in this group is 100% our responsibility. Your membership fee gives you access to all the wonderful people in our group, but it's up to you to do the work that it takes to get the business referrals and to build the relationships to help you be more successful. The other truth about WRN, there is no better networking group in Los Angeles. I've been to a ton of networking groups since taking over as president, and I haven't found one 
with the same level of integrity, enthusiasm, and professionalism as WRN. Our desire to do great things in this room is unparalleled. Our desire to support each other is unparalleled. There is so much we can accomplish together and so much that we want to accomplish together. We only need to sacrifice the thought of what about me and embrace the concept that the only way we win is when we win together. It's as if we're all on a racetrack and one of us is holding pistons and the other one has a tire and the other one has a steering wheel. And we're all trying to drag these things around the track towards the finish line. And what I'm saying is let's put them together. Now, the only thing we have to sacrifice in doing that is the idea of what about my pistons? What about my wheel? What about my tire? Successful people work together. The greatest successes have always happened as a group. So for the WRN success plan, I said there were two simple parts. Now I wanna talk about the ways that I will be willing to contribute to your success. I will offer free one hour masterminds three times a month after the meeting. At 845, we'll shut down the music, sit together and work on resolving any business issues you have. Masterminds were created by Napoleon Hill who wrote one of the best business books ever called Think and Grow Rich. If you haven't read it yet, I urge you to do so. I will offer free 30 second commercial clinics on the last Tuesday of the month after the meeting. This is the information that I help people with on the breakfast bunches that I do when WRN isn't meeting. I will attend network after work events once a month and provide free networking skill training for members who want to attend with me. I put out the invitation to this last month and only Carl and Beverly Brook attended. It's ironic because they're probably the members who need business help the least. I asked Beverly why she attended and she said it's important to us to stay on the cutting edge of business. The reason that they do so well is that they're constantly focused on improving themselves and their business. I will host free monthly webinars for WRN members on various marketing and business development topics. And I will continue to develop new and innovative ways to help this group learn, grow, and become more successful in their business lives. But I will only do this if you participate. It's now up to you. Are you going to step up? Are you going to push yourself? Are you going to walk through whatever difficulties it takes to find the thing that you define as success for yourself, your business, and your life? Please let me help you do that. And let me know if there's any way I can help you in getting more out of Westside Referral Network. Thank you so much for your time, your attention, and your focus. I look forward to seeing you in the room next Tuesday. Bye-bye.